Hello and welcome to ABs, everybody. We are back again with another podcast, and it's a very special occasion. It's the day that we all celebrate about unity, acceptance, and inclusion. Today is the Unity Day in India, and we have an expert on diversity and inclusion with us today that we're going to discuss a lot many things about on the topic and also on bringing unity along with kindness and acceptance. We welcome Ms. Anupama Ishwaran. Anupama, Thank you. welcome to our platform, welcome to 8Bs. We've been long wanting to have a conversation with you and have your thoughts on so many topics and so many insights. And uh, we're happy to have you here. Thanks, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for having me here. Right. Uh, before we move on, uh, a little bit of introduction. I mean, the, the list of achievements keeps going on and on, but I'll try to brief it in a, in a smaller introduction. Uh, for those of you who don't know, for those of you who know, Anupama is a diversity and inclusion coach. She's the co-founder of In Harmony, which is a diversity and inclusion consultancy firm. She is also a TEDx speaker and a transgender and queer ally. She's a trained counselor from Parivartan, Bangalore, and she also has multiple certifications as a diversity inclusion coach. She is certified from the ICF and Ericsson International, and with over 22 years of experience in diversity, inclusion, employee wellness, management, she's been doing wonders in the fields of diversity and acceptance. Welcome, Anupama. Thank you. Thanks, Ashish. Right. So before we kick on uh, uh, this discussion and we uh, start over, let's understand first uh, the idea of what unity is to you, because that's that's a contextual question that we need to set up. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when you say the word unity to me, it actually uh, re represents respect, uh, acceptance, unconditional acceptance. And um, a very uh, high level of tolerance uh, and patience. So to me, that's what unity looks like. Also, um, I see it like a cluster of, uh, you know, diverse things, diverse colors, etc., all coming together and forming a beautiful collage of, uh, you know, a variety of colors on a canvas. So I think that's what uh, unity to me looks like. But uh, bottom line is that, uh, you know, often we uh, we are very okay with people who are like us. And the minute there are like, you know, people who are unlike us, etc., then they just kind of uh, unconsciously, they become the others. So unity to me, uh, to me actually is like, you know, how do we create this us kind of a feeling or the belongingness kind of a thing. So yeah, that's what unity looks to me. Peace, respect, harmony. Indeed, the, the feeling of belonging and the feeling of us, I think. And I think given the current context of how yeah. there are so many differences and so many diversities including and existing, that feeling of belonging is something that's necessary, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, this takes us to another point of discussion, which is how everybody has so many differences and there is a lot of diversity, but all we aim for in a modern world is inclusion, is, is that unity or that acceptance, right? Uh, let's talk about this diversity and how these differences define us as humans. Do you Would you like to share any anecdotes or stories with regards to how much of it have you seen and how people react to something called diversity? Oh, yes. Like, I think it's, uh, if you look around you and on a day to day basis, I think you will notice so much of that, uh, the othering that uh, takes place. Uh, small instances, I have seen this happening even with uh, people who work in the inclusion space itself, where, uh, you know, certain set of people, uh, you know each other and that I think it just not automatically happens. So you go to a conference and then all the people who know uh, each other they gravitate towards each other and if there is like anybody who's a newbie uh, they're left to kind of figure out like you know which of this group is going to accept me and where can I get uh, included so something as simple as that happens to even people who are working in this space uh, as a kid in fact one of the reasons why I think I naturally gravitated to this whole space of diversity and inclusion is because uh, I come from an armed forces background and um, 
every few years, like a couple of years, sometimes even in a year's time, we were moving into a new city. I was getting into a new school, uh, settling into a new space, trying to fit into a new environment. And I have personally experienced what it means to be excluded, what it does to you as um, in terms of your confidence, in terms of uh, just uh, feeling lost and wondering like, you know, oh, who's going to be your friend and what do I need to do to make friends to what the magic that happens when, you know, you feel accepted and, uh, you know, you feel that sense of belongingness. So uh, I think that's what made me come into the space itself. And I realized that, you know, it, it does need a lot of work when you have to create an environment where people feel uh, that they belong here and it doesn't naturally happen unless you're like con you have a ha conscious hat somewhere you will not realize that uh, how unconsciously you're excluding a person without re without even wanting to be mean it's just that it just happens uh, automatically yeah and I think uh, it also kind of stems from a lot of taboos right because of what is different and what is you know how people are conditioned towards this belief that okay this is what is different and this is what is yours so I think yeah. that yeah please of course of course so I am a Keralaite and um, you know how or and these are like simple messages I think which you picked up like yeah uh, you know automatically there is this sense that oh anybody who's a Mallu is a nice person or mm -hmm. like you know you can easily form an association with them and uh, Others, you have to put in more uh, effort. So, I mean, subtle messages, I think, which came from probably the struggles which maybe my uh, parents would have gone through or etc. Till you start realizing that, no, it's got nothing to do with your state's border. Uh, it's just like human psychology and uh, stuff like that. So, uh, you're absolutely right. So, even if you look at, like we did a couple of years back, we've done a very interesting um, qualitative research on a caste and how people experience caste in the workplace right and uh, we I mean there were so many and one of the topics that we picked up was on microaggressions uh, how like we tend to talk about so many of our um, Hindu religious festivals uh, yeah. and rituals right and somebody who is a Dalit or from uh, a scheduled caste or tribe will not uh, they may they won't probably be having these uh, kind of rituals. Many of them could be Buddhists also, but uh, they're scared to come out um, and uh, say that they don't have these rituals. And unknowingly, that you know you've created a difficult spot for a person who could be may not be following the same uh, rituals. So I think that's another way that what you were also kind of referring to that, you know, certain things that we are conditioned to see that this is okay, this is not. Right, right. That is that is so true. And I think uh, this also kind of uh, escalates or expands to the definition of unity, that it's not unity just between two countries or two states or two borders. It's rather these micro aggressions of unity or being united that you have to spot, you know, and I think uh, most of your work also revolves around the similar circle where you try to find unity and acceptance throughout these smaller elements of life, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we do a lot of work on unconscious bias and that actually addresses this uh, topic that you're talking about, you know, right. unity and what comes in the way of uh, understanding another human being and right. connected to them. And I think uh, workspaces or works, work cultures in general, especially given the corporate context also, I think workspaces also become a hub of practicing this acceptance and unity at large, right? Uh, so what do you think, Anupama, is, uh, you know, if we talk about the work culture or how the workspaces are structured with the pyramids of uh, positions and then the colleagues and then the subordinates, how do you think uh, diversity and unity expands into that horizon? Um, so uh, I think that diversity per se, especially in our country, it exists. At, and, and at any workplace, there will be diversity. And just from the simple point that no two people are going to think alike or would have had the same experiences. In fact, for the same situation, 
two people may have completely different kind of uh, takeaways from that uh, situation. So diversity is definitely there all around um, us. Now, the focus is that what organizations are actually challenged with is that how do you create that unity or the inclusion or how do you leverage from the diversity, uh, which is right. there. Uh, also, how do you move from whatever the existing diversity that you see to bring in, consciously bring in certain other types of uh, diversity? For example, um, for a long time, like we, I, I think the last 20 years, a large part of the diversity work uh, in the corporates has been around bringing gender representation. And by that, I mean bringing in female uh, representation. Today, we talk about bringing transgender people into the workplace. Now, that's again, that consciously, if you don't build in these things, then it's not going to automatically come. So you need to create a certain hygiene in the organizations to bring in the diversity and also bringing that sense of inclusion um, which is what you mean by the uh, the unity part of it that you know how do all of these diverse elements mix well together and uh, you know actually create a very good potent uh, stuff for the organization right because i think on an organizational level also uh, uniting the workforce is something that any leader would also sort of focus on more because you don't want your colleagues to like you know have differences or you don't want them to treat each other differently so I think that's something that is essential right and uh, in yeah please no no go ahead and in this space itself I think uh, something as important as kindness when we talk about it that that becomes very important and I think ABs also uh, works uh, tirelessly towards maintaining and spreading kindness in the workplace here. So let's talk about that aspect of unity and diversity and in general a social uh, sort of structure to it. Uh, where do you see the spot and onus of kindness in this entire con context? So uh, Ashutosh, I think kindness is like the bedrock of unity. Um, like literally, it fosters empathy and it also actually leads you to um, you know, build appreciation for diverse views um, and also promotes the whole concept of respect and tolerance and inclusion. So, uh, like, you know, I said, like people come from different backgrounds. Kindness helps you to, uh, to actually bridge the gaps and build relationships. Uh, in fact, when you do any act of kindness, it's not just the person who is benefiting, uh, to whom you have done something, uh, being kind or you've done something out of kindness, but it's also you as a person who is doing this that you learn a lot in that whole process because when you're being kind, you're doing something for the other person based on their requirement, not that this is what I want to do, right? And that automatically yeah. helps you to build appreciation for another human being from their perspective. So, right. And that is, I think, essential for, for any work workspace or any any two people existing together need to have that, that kind attitude towards each other, right? Uh, talking of employee wellness in the same context, because I think we've uh, diverted towards a workspace conversation. We've diverted towards a conversation where we're looking at employee wellness, and that's the area of expertise that you also come from. So... Uh, could you suggest for our audiences and everybody watching this about certain activities or maybe instances where this employee wellness can be maintained towards a united front? Because the problems that we face around workplaces are mostly that, oh, my work, work culture is such that my team isn't united mm -hmm. or people are facing such concerns. So could you give us any examples of uh, how to maintain this unity within a workspace? So um, I, I know like in the past, um, under the whole employee wellness or well-being area, which is very important for many companies today, we have run uh, workshops around um, um, gratitude or, uh, you know, practicing gratitude and that as a way of, um, I mean, leading towards kindness, right? Uh, that when you are all like organizations also have this thing of they, they have an appreciation wall uh, where you actually if somebody has done something good or you felt good in a certain environment you actually go and put a sticker saying that you know this is what how I was helped and so and so 
person help kind of a thing i think these are all small things that are uh, very important also another big thing many organizations are doing is building a network of allies uh, right. so even if you have a pride employee resource group or uh, you have even an, a resource group for women or if it's for uh, even a person with disability you will see there are lots of allies pride specially you see more of allies than people from the community uh, initially and these allies are also actually it's all on the concept of being kind and understanding and making the effort to learn about the community right and how do i how can i be supportive uh, so i think these are some ways in which kindness as a concept is seeping into organizations uh, right. i know that there are companies who are talking about uh, kindness i remember sometime back reading a linkedin post by Nina Nair, who's currently heading Chanel, uh, and she used to be uh, the global head of Unilever earlier, and she had that post on kindness and how leaders need to practice kindness. Yeah, that was exactly what my next question was about to be, like going to direct towards, uh, because there's one thing when you ask the workforce to be kind and practice unity and acceptance, but if your top-notch leadership or management isn't active in this particular approach, uh, that it, it's like saying in Hindi, like it stays the same, path, like that we say, uh, which means that it, the, the situation or the status of the problem at hand is as is, as it was. So right. where do you see the responsibility of leadership going in this, in this regard? Like, could you give, give us some instances of that? I think Ashutosh, you've just answered your question with that quote. <laughs> So leadership, definitely, they need to role model this. Uh, otherwise, it's it's like, you know, you have a lot of policies and, uh, but it's not, I mean, the policies look very great, but it doesn't seem to be part of the culture. So uh, leaders are the ones who are going to drive the culture, uh, right? They need to walk the talk. Right. And um, unless they do it, it does not work. And we've seen also instances where, uh, there's a lot which has been spoken about inclusion and we need to do this and we need to bring in uh, people from diverse backgrounds, etc. But then as a leader, if you are not practicing inclusion or you are not consciously helping an, a diverse candidate grow in the organization, then then you're not, you're not doing anything. Right. Right. That's that's true, because uh, I think smaller gestures or smaller modules of change can lead to a larger acceptance so to speak that's what we are aiming at largely right um, yeah. would you yeah. want to share any I, i'm going to ask again like would you want to share any personal experiences with regards to you dealing with these top-notch leaders uh, and maybe teaching them uh, unity and diversity so we do a lot of work like i said on uh, like unconscious uh, biases for example uh, and many other like, you know, or uh, any other leadership kind of programs. And sometimes you do come across some uh, situations uh, where uh, the company is talking about uh, inclusion and diversity, etc. But uh, when you're sitting over, uh, you know, in the coffee break or lunch break, then some of the comments that come about maybe some of the participants itself. Um, I mean, it, it's like so... Um, stereotyped or uh, it's coming from a very prejudiced kind of a thought and then then I feel that oh I have a lot of work left to do <laughs> it doesn't uh, stop you and that's something I have seen because it's not an easy space I think unless you are conscious because a lot of times what happens is that uh, leaders also think that I'm I have arrived I'm doing the right thing mm. um, there are very few people there to show them the mirror to say that this may not be the right thing or this is what you need to do. It's not that they're not open to learn, but uh, there aren't enough people around them to show them the mirror also. That's that's true. And I think that's where uh, experts like yourself come into picture, which show the mirror and, you know, which is like, okay, this is the reality and you need to sort of accept people who they are and be very normal with everybody's existence, I think, right? 
yeah be normal and as leaders see for example now when we uh, like for example if i have since i do a lot of work with uh, the queer and the trans and the people now they uh, i mean the leaders come with saying that we want to hire uh, people from the community and uh, we should have so many numbers etc now when it comes to doing sensitization programs and suddenly they'll and we go with a whole roadmap saying do this 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 because that's the uh, only way that the community will feel included and the existing employees also there will be a synergy right, right. Uh, if we both sides understand each other but when it finally comes to rolling on this just do one uh, sensitization program which covers like a thousand employees now how will thousand employees get sensitized at one shot mm. uh, so you, you can't say that i want to include i want to bring this then you cut corners by trying to do a tick mark kind of a uh, exercise so i think we've also right now we've come to a point where we don't do that if you say sorry we can't because it, somewhere my conscience doesn't allow me to do something like that and place a candidate into an environment which i feel is not ready absolutely and i think that's also that's also where from the idea of all kind of washings like pink washing rainbow yes. washing and the the corporate white washing comes into picture because of that tick marking ability the the fact that they have the privilege to tick mark i call it a privilege i think it is a very big privilege to just act like you're supporting but you're not really yeah supportive of that unity right and yeah i mean great insight on that uh i've, I've been really uh, struggling myself with regards to having that sort of unity acceptance around identities because i come from the queer community and you know that's where things lie around because we understand that uh, there is there is a newer or contemporary community building around us but that itself is coming from the context of stereotypes that is itself coming from you know just or oh, touching the matter not actually getting into the matter yeah yeah do you, do you have something to add to that of as to how can we get away from that mindset of not just Uh, touching the matter but actually taking concern of such issues it's it's uh there is no easy uh, you know formula for this i think you just need to be very very consistent uh, in right. the efforts um so normally in any organization where they are driving for example if it's a, even a queer, a queer agenda uh, there are some people who have very strong supporters and i have seen some of them doing some brilliant work where they've not given up and mm. uh, they have actually gone uh, you know after the senior leadership and ensured that they have heard them out and they are allies they're not even from the community and then you know the, they have rallied around the uh, the community so i think you need people like that in every organization to drive this and not give up just because a leader is not ready to listen like i've had many companies with whom i've done a lot of other work on gender and uh, other spaces and whenever i have brought up this whole uh, lgbtq related issues and they say no we are not ready our leaders are not ready to listen to us and uh, as an organization we are not ready and it, it really pains me because i think there is some research which says that you know 1% of every population with can be from the lgbtq community and so which means every organization will have people from the community working from there very and true if, and if you don't you are not talking you are not doing anything i mean being in a closet can be so painful like I always like tell that you know just think of yourself being stuck in a box with no windows no holes nothing to breathe how suffocating can it be and how much of your energy will go into just trying to survive in that place and that's exactly how a person in a closet would be feeling Right. right so but but i i mean we don't give up we also keep talking and it's not just corporates it's even in society uh, it's not that today i i mean i like talks a lot about the, that all my friends are going to be my support, you know support me they'll all say ah very good work you're doing but uh, are they going to step up are they going to stand next to me and be equally vocal allies today may not be but uh, i'm i'm sure like soon they would be right so we yeah. can't give up yeah i think that's something that slowly and gradually it will happen because i think the reason we celebrate 
these days and these special occasions on inclusion and diversity speaks volumes itself about how much work is needed in this particular section and how many smaller and slower steps can you know guide you towards maybe a better world right it has been a wonderful discussion with you uh, on this anupama and all that i'm curious about to know and i think our audience is also is where do you see the future of this heading like diversity unity and inclusion related uh, sort of initiatives especially in the corporate and also in the generic world where do you see the future of all of that uh, i don't think there's any looking back i think we i i'm very optimistic and hopeful i think we will only progress uh, from a, irrespective of how the world is today i know it's um it is kind of a host there are a lot of hostilities all around us but uh, there are also a lot of uh, more uh, i think voices that are talking unity uh, across uh, from different segments so i i am i'm i am an optimist so i <laughs> you know so i definitely feel that you know we will see uh progress only and we'll see especially in corporates we will see them moving forward only with this agenda uh maybe even 10 10 years back yeah when i set up in harmony bni or dei was uh, something which people were double hatting they were into business and they were doing some part time thing into dei somebody was handling that also today right. dei is a role in organizations right it's a conscious role there are di committees and not just one person handling di di depending on the size of the organization you have a team so obviously there is this is the future and we will have more work happening in this space and that sounds really hopeful and we do hope that there there is a brighter and stronger future but i think together for all you know because as we say unity is always in diversity so i think that's all that we should accept right Sure. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much, Anupama. It has been a wonderful time discussing uh, with you and looking at your work. I hope uh, you also had a great time discussing it on our platform and you know speaking with APs. Absolutely, Ashutosh. Thank you so much for having me on this platform, and it was wonderful uh, talking to you. Same here. To all the audiences watching us, we hope that you practice. Uh, smaller smaller ways of you know maintaining unity accepting whatever is around you because everything is normal and you got to accept what is normal so thank you so much in for joining in please subscribe to it base and keep watching thank you thanks ashish bye bye